Aloha, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Friday Night Punani Patrol, the podcast with the goal of creating a community of optimal human beings. Today's optimal human being, aka higher human, is Brandon Harris. Brandon, brother, please introduce yourself and give the listeners a quick background of yourself. Well, Cooney, what's up, man? You know, I, I appreciate what you're doing and your message and, and everything that uh, you're putting out. So I appreciate the the time and the connection, man. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm a gym owner. I'm a, I'm a trainer in Arizona. And I have been working as a trainer, as a coach for, for shoot, almost 20 years. So I'm, I'm kind of like an OG, man. You know, you, you, uh, you, you eventually get there really quick. But I, I own a gym here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I work with uh, a lot of different professional athletes from MLB players, UFC athletes, PGA Tour golfers, um, NFL, NHL, and then just average, your average Joes as well. And I'm uh, extremely passionate about, about movement, about training and connection, uh, Zen philosophy, and, and really just growing on a daily basis. So, so once again, man, I appreciate the connection, the opportunity and, you know, much love, man. Hey, everything you're about, man, I'm about. So I'm super glad to have you on as well. Let's get into a little bit about your background. How did you get into this whole uh, performance and coaching and training? So I studied kinesiology in college. I was, I was uh, an athlete uh, growing up and, and, and had aspirations of playing professional sports and, and that didn't pan out. So as I got to, to university, to college, I really didn't know what I wanted to focus on. And uh, I jumped around a little bit, but I was always passionate about training and physical performance, mental performance. So I found myself in kinesiology. And from there, I just I started working as a trainer at your big, bigger box gyms. And from there, I progressed to owning a business and, and working with you know, some very high level athletes. Nice. So the main athlete that I saw you working with that really got me interested in following you was, of course, Sugar Sean O'Malley. He's probably uh, one of the higher names. And uh, I really love him as a fighter stylistically. I think him and I have really similar styles. We're both tall, lanky and, and flashy and like to move around a lot. Uh, but talk to me a little bit about how you got started with uh, Sean O'Malley. So I've been around Sean for probably, probably almost seven years, you know, if anywhere from five to seven, it's hard to keep track. But I, I, the first UFC athlete that I worked with was Scott Holtzman. So Scott Hot Sauce Holtzman, who's a 155er in the UFC. And as I started to work with him, I started to spend a little bit of time at the MMA lab. And started to do uh, movement stuff with the guys, the breathing stuff with the guys, just really trying to connect with, with athletes in the sport because I was really interested in it and passionate about it. And I remember seeing Sean when he was, shoot, probably, you know, 19, 20 years old and just thinking, man, this kid, he has something. He moves, he, he moves well. He has a really unique uh, style to him. He has a really good mindset. And, we started working on a smaller at, at a smaller capacity where I was just really doing breath work and more prehab recovery type stuff with him. And then that progressed into being his strength and conditioning coach. So it's been a, it's been a really fun, fun journey with him because he is, he's a real deal. And I really, I believe in him as an athlete. I believe in him as a human. He, like you said, he has, he has a cool style. He has a really interesting, unique personality. He's very authentic in what he's doing. And I believe he can be a world champion. So it's fun to be a part of that, that team. Yeah, I agree as well. The kid's super talented and super entertaining to watch. So I'm really excited for all that. Um, it's cool that you said you started working with him with breath work because breath work is something that I recently just got into maybe a little less than a year ago. I read that book, The Oxygen Advantage. And yeah. it's been an extreme game changer for me. So I'm um, wondering if, um, if it had the same effect for, for your, your people as well. Cause I feel like, yeah, I had the physical part down and I was training a lot, but once I discovered breath work and like the biochemistry of things and just using the breath to really be more in the moment and, and aware and 
using it to like activate the different parasympathetic sympathetic responses and all that like it was like the craziest game changer so i'm just wondering if uh if it gave you gives your athletes like that extra boost like that extra one percent that probably gets into the elite level as well 100 percent man i i it's what's awesome about that is the oxygen advantage is one of the first books i read that really catapulted my my own growth and my interest in that. So that's cool. I, I probably read that like seven years ago and wow. right. Yeah. Right around that time. I was, I was also, I had done a Wim Hof uh, workshop. So there was all of these things that, that happened at really about the same time. I I've, I've meditated since I was a lot younger, but it, it, I don't know if I really ever understood what I was trying to do. At, until a little bit later in life. And then I started to tie those things together. But I, I believe a hundred percent that athletes that can facilitate flow and can synchronize mind and body, which to me is what the breath can do. And I think nasal breathing plays a big role for the down rag for the parasympathetic, like you said, and if you're elite, it's, it's the 1%, it's whatever advantage you can get that might be the, 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 the deal breaker, right? Because everybody's physically gifted when they're performing, uh, at, you know, and they're in the UFC or they're in any of these, uh, any of these leagues. So it's, it's these other things that really separate the elite from everyone else. And I think, I think breath work, I think mindfulness, I think, I think those are very, very powerful tools that, that an athlete, you know, should embrace that the average human should embrace as well. Do you think it's a little underrated nowadays and it should be uh, like it's it's slowly getting popularized, don't you think? Like little by little. Yeah, man. I mean, it really is. There's I mean, look at we're talking about it. Right. And and I know, you know, recently um, there was uh, I forget what it was like one of the UFC promotions where they were talking about about Izzy training in, in New Zealand and he has a breath. He has a breath coach. So that's cool, right? You're starting to see like things like that are going to catapult it when you see at high level athletes working with people specifically on their breathing. I think it's the, I think it's the, the place we should start with everyone. So if, if I get, if I get a, uh, a 55 year old executive that comes into my gym, I start him with breathing or her with breathing. And I can typically tell right away if that's off. And if that's off, they're going to move. They're not going to move great. They're not going to be able to load their body correctly. They're going to be stuck probably in a sympathetic state, right? A fight or flight all the time. That's going to create hormonal issues, right? It's, it's, it's so powerful, both from a physical standpoint of how we move and how we generate power, and also from a a mental, like those two sides and those are connected. So it's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. I've discovered now that the breath is literally connected to everything we do, like phys physiologically with our health and mentally with how we think it's, it's a trip, dude. Would you be able to enlighten us? Maybe some of the breathing protocols you do for specifically fighters. Like if there are fighters listening to this, maybe specific breathing protocols for uh, pre-workout, uh, cool down, pre-fight, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of different protocols, but I think, I think you want to play with it. So I try to encourage my fighters, my athletes to, to play with the breath. And what I mean by that is to just experience it and, and try different techniques. But generally speaking, we want to have some type of up reg breathing, uh, before a workout or before a competition. That's typically going to involve more of a faster pace. It might be in nose, out mouth. Uh, it could be mouth, mouth, depending on how much of an up, up reg we want to get and depending on the athlete. And then the other side is that down reg side. So driving into a parasympathetic state after competition, after a workout, so that we can really start to, 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 to get the healing and the recovery process going. That's typically going to be a slower pace, nasal, nasal. Uh, exaggerating the exhale pauses between the inhale and exhale. Like that's the general idea is faster, more super ventilation is going to up the system. 
breath holding can drive that as well. And then that down reg is, is really just slowing down the breath, both the inhale and the exhale. It's almost always going to be nasal or we're trying to, to slow down and lighten the breath as much as we can. So hyperventilation for upregulating the nervous system and more slow nasal diaphragmatic breathing with pauses in between to downregulate the central nervous system. For sure. And I think, I think you want to always die, diaphragmatically breathe. Even in an upreg, you're still trying to, to use the diaphragm. So you don't want that to be super chest heavy where you're just, right? Like, so there, I think there's a difference between superventilating and hyperventilating. Um, you know, more from probably from a, a, a functional standpoint where like habitual bad breathing is probably more uh, hyperventilation where superventilating is, is really loading the system with oxygen, right? Starting to focus less on the exhale. They're a little bit different. Interesting. So I used to have a problem with uh, going to sleep after training because I used to train twice a week. Uh, six times, I'm sorry, twice a day, six times a week. And I would have I had insomnia going home. And I felt that, man, why am I feeling like this? Even though I'm training my ass off physically tired, why is it that I can't go to sleep? And then I, th I think it's because I wasn't doing a cool down breathing and I wasn't down regulating my central nervous system, which is why uh, I was suffering from insomnia. And then I feel like once I started to do this down regulation of my central nervous system, then I never had this problem of going to sleep. And then I was recovering and I was feeling more fresh at practice is, uh, is that, can you explain like why that's important? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're starting to drift yourself into the parasympathetic state, right? You're allowing your body to recover. I think it's a great way to store what you learned. So it's, there's, there's a lot of, um, uh, brain science that that will show like down regulating after training and spending some time reflecting on what you just did reflecting on what you learned and then also having gratitude towards yourself and towards your commitment to your practice will really help to store things and it can drive us into that that state where where we recover and relax so i 100 percent think if you're training late and you're up and your nervous system is on edge and you're, you know, really you're, you're, you're stressing your nervous system, right? That's how we grow. That's how we change. You always want to finish that with bringing the system down because otherwise you could experience insomnia and you could experience, you know, a lot of other things that, that aren't beneficial to the athlete. So one of, one of the, the my favorite patterns that I, that I play with and I'll encourage people to play with post-training is a double nasal inhale. And then there's a pause at the top of that inhale. And then it's a slow nasal exhale, all the air out. Follow the out breath. As you out breath, think about releasing stress. Think about letting go. Like you can really visualize that out breath coming out and leaving. And you can connect with space with that exhale breath pause at the end of your exhale and bring it back in. So it's a double inhale. It's an easy first. So it's like, there's a little bit of a pause. All the way out. So that double, that double inhale, full expansion, good diaphragmatic breath, slow exhale all the way out with a little bit of pause. I find that to be a really good one. And I think, I think it's you're synchronizing synchronizing the mind and body when you follow the breath. It's a good way to think about it. If you if you follow the breath, if you if you connect your mind with the breath, it's impossible for you to be thinking about okay, what do I have to do or you know, I'd like whatever those thoughts may be, you're literally connecting your mind and body through the breath. The breath is the anchor. So that's a that's a that's one of the reasons why it's so valuable to have that practice is you're getting out of your head. I think that's a balance that people need to start practicing um, because people can get so caught up with all the things that they need to do. And they didn't take care of this. They got to take care of that. If they can just like, I like, I really like putting on a timer sometimes. I'll just put on three minutes and just go in and just breathe and relax and stop thinking about everything. And like you said, bring, bring gratitude to each breath 
And I feel that that energy of gratitude helps put me in a better mood. And I think it also has positive physiological effects for the body as well. Don't you think like if we feel good, then like our immune system feels stronger and it promotes recovery and, and then by 100%. being more calm, right. You know what I mean? Like, I think 100%, that's, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish uh, more people could, well, that's what the reason of this podcast. So if you guys are listening, when you guys are breathing, bring some gratitude to your breath because it's something that can, it's powerful. Um, actually, let me just talk about, um, I have these seven optimal, uh, seven keys to optimal health, in my opinion, that I've been kind of developing. And I want to share them with you. And I want you to comment, agree, disagree, add on, you know, whatever. Number one is functional breathing. Definitely. Number two is mindfulness. Number three is adequate sleep. Number four is proper hydration. Number five is balanced nutrition. Number six is stress management. And number seven is consistent exercise. And this is for anyone, athletes, uh, average Joes. And if you notice consistent exercise is last because you could be exercising super hard, but if you don't have your breathing in check, your diet in check, you're not hydrated, you're not sleeping, then none of it's going to count. And if you want to start taking care of your health, the first thing you should start with is the breath, like you were saying before. So what's your, what are your thoughts on that? I love it, man. No, I love it. I think it's, I think you nailed it. I think it's, it's uh, simple, right? But, but it's not, but if, if people can just embrace making simple changes, they're, they're more likely to, to stick. And I, like you said, the breath is, is a great, is a great start because it, for me, and you said mindfulness was too, right? Breathing mindfulness, like a lot, all these things are very connected. Like if you have, if you spend time doing breath work, practicing mindfulness, you, you'll have a different perspective when, with everything in your life, right? So with your training, uh, with your nutrition, with your sleep, like you, you have, it, it completely starts to spill over into everything. Um, I, I went on a run today and I had this, this kind of insight as I was running is, is just how, how mindfulness is brought into something physical, like running. And really what, what I was thinking of is like, when I, when I got to a place where I wanted to quit, I became aware of that. And I was able to see that, that negative, that negative energy, that negative thought. And I was able to, uh, to not attach to it, not judge myself for it not react to it, but I was able to see it. And I could say like, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm going to keep going. So mindfulness gave me the, the power to be able to see that and to be able to push through, you know, you, it, it's, it's amazing how it can feed into everything that we do. It's extremely simple, but it's not at the same time. I feel like once people can bring attention to their breath and start being aware of how they're breathing, then mindfulness is the next step because breath is like the most fundamental thing that we can do as human beings. So if they can start paying attention to the breath, then they'll be like, Oh my God, I've been breathing through my mouth. Let me try to breathe through my nose. Then once they start breathing yeah. through their nose, they close their mouth, the carbon dioxide levels start rising. Uh, their blood vessels start opening up. They start thinking clearer. Then the mindfulness can come in. That, that's, that's kind of like why I put it in that hierarchy. Because, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's a trip. Um, and you were talking about um, perspective too, like mindfulness helps to just give you a way better perspective and your perspective is your reality. And if you can start changing your perspective on how you view things instead of complaining all the time and, and even just like the simple things, like you were bringing mindfulness to running and earlier I was just washing dishes and I was bringing mindfulness. Like I was like, everything is Kung Fu, you know, everything is power energy. And if you just bring mindfulness to those kind of things, like I really don't like doing dishes, but you know, I have dishes to wash. I have food to eat. I have running water. Those are just a lot of things that I was just being grateful for, allowing that kind of energy to fill me up. And I started on my day off with a really great mood. And that's the kind of stuff that I, I thought was like hippie juju stuff before, but it's just, I feel t like life hacks, you know what I mean? All right. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, when you, when you practice that, you're, you're becoming fully, fully present in your life. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing, man. That's, that's living, that's experiencing. It's it. Life is about experiencing. And when you, when you embrace that 
And it, it is, it's, it's weird for somebody that's never thought about it. You hear it and you're like, God, it doesn't make sense. But when somebody, when you and I are community, we get it right. Because we practiced it. So the hack is breathe, practice breathing, because like you said, breathing will give you perspective on your, on mindfulness. And then that starts to expand. And if you can become, if you can become fully present in your life, whether you're doing the dishes and you've probably, have you read miracle of mindfulness? No, I have not. No, well, that's, that's so that's a great book for people. Miracle down. of my, and, and he talks about doing the dishes in that book. So it's, it's just your time. It's all your time, right? Whether I'm, whether I'm here being able to share this connection with you, you're, you're across the world, whether I'm on a beautiful beach, it's just my time. One is not better than the other. And, and as you, as you embrace being mindful and being fully present, you realize that, that, that these experiences are, are unique and different in their own right, but none are better. It's, it's, and if you can get to that place in your life, that's beautiful because now doing the dishes is, is an experience. You're not doing the dishes thinking, man, if I was on the beach, my life would be better because then you get to the beach and you're like, well, I wish I was on a better beach. Right. I mean, it's, you're not, you're not living your life when you're, when you're working that way. And that's the beauty of my, that's the beauty of mindfulness, right? It, it's like, you're always looking, if you're always looking for something better and you're not embracing what you have, that is going, you're, you're going to, you're, you're not going to be happy. You're going to experience suffering and suffering is in our mind. That's the beauty of, that's the beauty of it. We get to choose. They say paradise is a state of mind, but hell is also a state of mind, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I just had a, I just had a conversation with Sugar Sean. I think we, I did his podcast uh, on Wednesday and he was, he was reading a book and he was saying how, you know, happiness is a skill. And, you know, there you go. And what, what is that? To me, that skill is mindfulness, right? That skill is, is being more present in your life for sure. And like mental repetitions are breathing in and saying thank you for that breath and exhaling and putting out that love and gratitude into the universe. That's like mental repetitions for the mind, for the spirit. That's, that's powerful, man. Happiness is a skill. Very well done. So, and this is really complements like the whole movement thing that you do too, because once you bring that mindfulness and you start bringing mindfulness to your body and you realize, oh my goodness, this parts of my body hurt, or I can't move these parts of my body. Then you start paying more attention to those things and trying to like optimize yourself as a human. Let's talk about um, your higher human podcast and how that uh, sprung about. Well, it's really similar to what you, you're doing, man. It's um, I'm trying to connect with people and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, educate people on this perspective. I'm trying to help people because this, this way of living, this lifestyle has changed my life. And it's really hard to see people suffering and how, and people struggling and and life, life is, you you cannot escape pain in life, but, but pain gives us perspective for joy. So for me, higher human is, is about embracing growth, both mentally and physically about, about chasing a little bit more every day and realizing that there is no finish line to this. This is not, we're not after some magical uh, uh, ending point where we've made it. It's about embracing a growth mindset in everything that we do. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to spread the love. I'm trying to connect with people. I'm trying to use my uh, connections to athletes and to people to just spread that message. Cause I, cause I see it in everything. I see it. I see it with sugar Sean. I think that is, I think that's one of the most uh, beautiful aspects about him as an athlete is how he embraces that. And he's able to tap into the moment as good as I've ever seen, but I see it in baseball players. I see it in, I see it in moms. I see people that, that, that have figured it out, whether they, know what they're doing or not, typically they are embracing a growth mindset. They look at things, they, maybe they have an innate way or maybe they've cultivated of looking at life and the struggles that life present as opportunities to grow. So it's kind of cool to connect with people and try to pull that out. And, and hopefully like you're doing, man, you know, people see these things and they're interested. 
and they and they start to uh, they start to change the way they view life. They start to change the way they live life, and it starts to you know we create a movement of people being more connected, having more love, right? Smiling more, you know. Life life's already hard, man. We don't need to make it any harder. Amen, brother. Amen. People are struggling way too much. And uh, I just feel like they, like, I feel like we as human beings are, we're powerful, man. Like we're, we're amazing. Like the way that the human body is built and how the immune system repairs itself and how quick we can heal and how many things we're able to accomplish if we put our minds to the right things. But so many people are caught up in like their own vicious cycles because they have so much uh, trauma and fear and just all this negativity that they don't know how to deal with and they don't want to they can't they don't have enough mindfulness and uh understanding of self to really deal and tackle those problems and undo all the bad things that happen in order to move forward you know what i mean and uh yeah i've been hearing that from a lot of coaches that i've been interviewing saying that most of the people that come in looking for a physical transformation aren't really looking for a physical transformation. It's usually a mental transformation and a spiritual transformation that they're really looking for. And so hopefully if people are listening to this and they're dealing with some stuff, you know, they can try to get through it and move forward and try to live their life and embrace this growth mindset that you're talking about, because it's a, it's a beautiful way to live, man. I'm, I'm really excited. Every time I wake up in the morning, it's, it's just a habit now, but it's not a habit that I'm not mindful of. And uh, I really want to just, like you said, man, spread the love and spread the joy because <laughs> you've been doing this for a while, man. And uh, did you ever think that you'd be working at this, this high elite of a level with these kind of elite athletes when you first started? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I never, I don't think it was ever my goal to be, to have, to have a, elite athletes. I, I think it was more about, I wanted to be an elite coach. And as I grew in my coaching I, I started to just in the connections that I built, I started to build, built, I started to get opportunities with different types of people. And I, and I think athletes, the beauty with athletes is that they're, they're looking to grow and they're looking to, uh, to capitalize however they can to be better at their, 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 their art, their skill. Um, you know, they have a little bit different incentives to, 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 to do that than maybe the average person. I don't think it should be that way, but right. An athlete at the top of their game realizes to stay at the top of the game, they got to take care of themselves. Right. So, but for me, it was never about chasing working with athletes. I just kind of presented itself as I grew in my craft and I'm still trying to do that. I still try to, I'm still looking to, to grow and hopefully what I'm doing today will be completely different in, in a year and two years and five years, because I, because I really try to embrace this, this mindset of, I don't have the answers, but I'm going to work my butt off to, to try to, to try to find them. And I think that's a never ending thing as well. I don't think you ever get to a place where you're okay. I know it all. Right. If you're looking for a coach and they tell you they have all the answers, I don't know if you want to trust that person. Right. Because I do think, I think there are, there are, there are no right models, but there are useful ones, right? Somebody said that, I don't remember who, that's not my quote, but, but I love that. They, there are no right models. There are useful ones. So somebody that tells you like they have all the answers and my way is the right way. I, at least for me, I don't want to work with that person. <laughs> I want to work with somebody that it, they like, look, like I don't have the answers, but you better believe I'm going to do my best to to help you or to right to facilitate those things so yeah that's a I think I heard you guys talk about I think I listened to your podcast you guys were talking about that growth mentality of beginner's mind and always yeah. making sure that you don't give into the ego and you realize that hey there's always more to learn there's always more to keep getting better at and that's what's going to keep you in that growth mindset and that's that's something I learned as a martial artist at a young age for sure uh yeah it's like that constant, it's like a paradox, right? Like you're striving for perfection, but you know, you're never going to reach it, but it's that constant pursuit of perfection that keeps you sharp at the same time. Right. Yeah. You just, you're chasing a little bit more and you're, and you're a little bit more. It can come in different ways, right? It's not always going to be this linear incremental increase in your skill. It might be that little bit more might be 
your mindset of, of, of you had a shitty practice, you had a crappy practice and you, you didn't do things right, but you, but you had the right intention. You came in with, with the right mindset. It just didn't, it was a bad day that happens. But on that day, a little bit more is how you view that, that struggle, right? Like that's the same, you can grow there as well. That, that chasing a little bit more can happen in so many different ways. And that, that's a good way to live. That, that chasing of I'm going to grow a little bit more, however I can. I like to think about like sacred intention. And to me, I like the word sacred because it creates power around our intention. And when I think of sacred intention, it's when I, when I get out of bed, I'm going to set my intention on being present today. I'm going to set my intention on being mindful when I interact with people. When I go, when I go to work out, I'm setting my intention. There's, there's a process for me. A lot of times that might be through breathing. Like if I'm going to work out, I'll, I'll use upregulating, upregulation, breathing, superventilation, breath holds to set my intention on what I want to accomplish in that, in that, that session. And I think that's really powerful for people to, to understand and to practice. And that could be coming into this podcast. Right. I said, I told myself before we, we got together that my sacred intention in this was to listen, was to be present, was to connect. Now, imagine you do that with your, your family, with your, your, your wife, your girlfriend, your partner, whatever that is, we're constantly, everything is sacred. Our time is sacred. Our intention is sacred. And that's a, that's a really good way to, to, to channel our, our intention to channel our focus into this growth, growth platform. So I think that's, that's powerful for, for a martial artist, for any athlete to practice that because you definitely don't want to wait until you're in a fight to where you're all of a sudden you're nervous and you're like, your mind's all over the place. So think of every interaction in your life as an opportunity to, to set your intention. And if you, the more you practice that, like you said, you know, it's, it's mental muscle, the easier it gets when the stakes are high. I think I heard this quote that sounds perfect for what you're talking about. He says, uh, the, the moment of truth is now. Yeah. And so with right. every moment now, you have to have intention with every single moment that you're doing and be intent, be present, have intention with what you're doing. That's, ooh, that's very powerful. Right. What are your future plans with, um, with your strength and conditioning and this whole performance, high performance career? So with the higher human, my goal is to, to definitely continue to grow that. I'm, I'm in the process of putting together an online platform where uh, I'm going to have uh, workout programs. I'm going to have uh, breathing work. I'm going to have meditations. My, and my goal there is to, is to really connect with people globally that want to be a higher human, right? I, I think about that and, and to be able to connect with these people. So I, there's a lot there. Like I look at, okay, how do you create a community online? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's things like zoom. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it where, where we can just exponentially make change. So there, I have a lot of passion for that. I'm really excited to, to get that together uh, from both the physical and the mental side. So that's going to be out premier fitness systems, my gym, I'm going to continue to, you know, to, to help people there at the facility. Um, and I'm just going to keep growing, man. I feel like, I feel like at this point in my life, that's also something I value, which is continue to read and to do the work personally so that I can do a better job helping people. Like, I don't think you can help people if you don't do the work yourself. Amen, and to brother. be honest, that's, that, that's like, you have to change, to change other people, you have to change yourself. You can't change other people, right? You, it's like the, you know, be about it. Don't, don't talk, don't talk about it. Be about it type thing. Like be the change. That's how you change people. Change yourself first. Amen. Positive ripple effect from once you start within, then you can start uh, spreading the influence externally. But you got to start with yourself first though. Heck yeah. You can't change other people, right? Like, like they've got to, it's like you, you as a good coach, you can, you can open the door but the student has to choose to walk through like, that's a, that's a real thing. Like you show somebody, you show them the door, they've got to choose to make those changes. 
And, and that's where there's accountability. That's where there's ownership of it is like people need to take ownership over their change as well, because you, it's all you it's, in, it's, it's, it's here. You're right. It's, it's inward, make that choice and, and move forward. That's a struggle on its own too, though, because so many people want to help and they, they feel bad because they see these people struggling and they want to be there for them. And they keep trying to be the guy who forces the water down the horse's throat, but you can't, you can't force the horse to drink, right? You can lead them to the water, but they got to be the one to, to want to help themselves. And uh, that's, that's, yeah. uh, that's, a th- that's a thing a lot of people struggle with nowadays. And it, we need to enlighten them to be like, Hey, in their own time, right? Like, you can't expect them to accept the help right when you want. It has to be in their own time, if they're in their own time because everyone's on their own journey. So they'll get to that point of maturity in their own time, I suppose. And right, for sure. Yep. The, the sooner we can accept that, the less we can, uh, the less we can suffer because of trying to keep changing other people. <laughs> All right, brother. Um, let me look for a couple more. Okay. Do you have like a um, keys, like um, um, a specific list of rules for high performance or stuff that you preach to your, your clients, like things they should always be aware of as well? I mean, my, my list is really similar to yours. I, I think there, you know, there might be other things that I would, that I would add, like spending time in nature. Um, I think that's a big one. I think when people can, can spend some time in nature and that might just be, you know, that might be a, a walk outside. I know right now with you COVID things are weird, but I do think there's this, this ability to unplug and this ability to connect with nature. It helps facilitate these other things like breathing and awareness and, and mindfulness. So that would be one, um, like you know a physical challenge every day like you said exercise i think that's big it's and that could be a walk it could be a run it could be a workout it could be an mma session i think it's good for us to you know to get the to get the air moving to get the blood moving to challenge ourselves physically on a daily basis um connect with people listen i think that's a big one too is actually being being an active listener but that comes back to mindfulness and that goes back to breathing right somebody that can't follow their breath somebody that can't be mindful or is completely unaware of that is going to have a really hard time listening and they're going to have a hard time connecting so it's 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 crazy how i think everything can kind of go back to to that if you can if you can simplify it all the way to, to doing some breath work every day maybe that's three minutes and then learning from there to, to be a little bit more mindful as you integrate or as you uh, go through your life, doing the dishes, practicing MMA, connecting with your, your friends, like everything starts to become a little bit better. You ever notice nowadays, a lot of people, like you'll be having a conversation and they'll just kind of be like looking around or kind of look at their phone and you can't really get someone's full attention nowadays because <laughs> they're always thinking yeah. about something else or trying to check the notifications. It's to struggle trying to communicate it's bad man i mean it's scary you know it really is i think because i know how i feel like i i I practice i practice breathing every day i i feel like you know i'm I'm a little bit along in that journey and i still struggle like i'm not good at it i don't know if i i think that's probably the way to look at it is like i'm just going to keep trying to get better but i but our devices social media there's so many ways We're, we're tethered to so much so much in our life that it's even more important i think now to have to have moments away from it for sure yeah so people if you guys are listening put down your phones for a couple minutes you know take some time to breathe take some time to just appreciate your life appreciate what you got right now because there are so many people out there who got less than what you got and they seem to be happy (laughs) yes sir yeah it's yeah it's it's like don't don't worry about what you don't have. Appreciate what you do have. That's a, that's a good rule of thumb, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit back to your, um, your business. How did you market it? Because you got quite the following now. You ended up working with a lot of high-level people. How did your name get out, get out there? Did you have a specific marketing strategy? Did you hire a professional? Or did, did you just stay genuine to yourself and just promote your character? 
Yeah, consistency. I think that was that's the biggest thing is is consistency, uh, being authentic. Uh, you got to be a little bit of a hustler, right? I think you know just getting out there and talking to people and then doing a good job and and word of mouth. I think is the best way to do it. So I think I think you want to understand your your niche. I think that's big and that can be challenging because. You know, I think most of us, we, 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 it's hard to like be one thing. We were a lot of things, but I think digitally and through marketing, you want to pick a niche and you want to, you want to attack that niche and then maybe you expand that niche. Mm. But if I said, if I, if I thought about it and I think the one thing that we did well was we consistent, we cared about people, um, we built relationships and I think those are, those are the big, big keys for sure. That's definitely a common trend, um, caring for people, like being genuine and actually caring about the people as not just their physical part, but them as a, as a whole human, the mental, emotional, spiritual, that whole side. And I feel I've noticed that when I interview um, successful fitness uh, professionals, that's one of their main things, caring about the person as a whole. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Mm. We're about 10 minutes left. Let's see. If you could build the perfect martial artist, how would you build them? Like skill-wise, like um, attributes, characteristics, the way they think, the way they move. How would you build what in your in your opinion? That's that's a tough question, man. I mean, Big I'm time. a big Bru- I'm a big Bruce Lee guy. So what I thought, I mean, I you know, I find the more I even go back and read his stuff and listen to his stuff, it fascinates me because he was, he had, he figured it out. And you think about the impact he's had on the world. I want to say he passed, he, you know, he passed in his mid thirties, right? Maybe, maybe upper thirties. Like he, you know, he had a, you know, kind of a short life, but he had such an impact. Um, and the be like water is, you know, you're fluid right? You're flowing. You're not, it's not being stuck to one style. So I think adaptability is a big attribute. Nowadays with MMA, you have to be good at everything, which I, which is one of the things I find fascinating about the sport is you can't just be a specialist. It's like, it's like the specialization of MMA is being a generalist because you have to be good on the ground. You have to be good at striking, you have to be good at movement. You have to have good defense. If you're, if you're going to climb to the top, you have to be good at a lot of things. So adaptability, um, I think flexibility, but not flexibility in the sense of being flexible, but being, uh, being unbreakable, right. Being bendable. Right. I think I would think of those that I think a growth, a growth mindset is definitely an attribute the ability to tap into the moment, the ability of the ability to, to look at, look at fear and have an intimate relationship with it. So I think, I think that's one of these things is I don't think anybody doesn't, nobody doesn't have fear. And then I think MMA, it's, it's probably the, there's probably the most fear, but if you, if you pretend like you don't have fear, I think that can create problems. I think, a really good martial artist is probably has a more of an intimate relationship with their fear. They see it, they, they go towards it and they they're okay with it. So I think that's, that's probably tied to a growth mindset, but I, but I think this ability to look at fear and, and kind of be okay with it and, and understand it and not let it, not let it uh, have a crazy impact on mindset and performance. Um, Physical traits, uh, I think being being able to be elastic, turn on, turn off, be strong, but also be explosive. And then also there's there's the personality side, right? There's the the re- relatability. There's the authentic authentic. I can't say that authenticity. Authenticity, right? brother. They, there you go, right? Yeah, so. I th- hopefully that answers it, man. I th- those are 
those are the things that I think about with MMA and, and it's such, it's such a fascinating sport because of all those things that somebody has to do. I think something you said was really profound that a specialist of MMA today is a generalist. <laughs> That's crazy because people have to, yeah, like you said, there's so many things that they got to learn how to do, but they got to learn how to put it all together and be generally good in each area in order to uh, adapt to whatever the problem is at the time, because there's so many different styles of fighters nowadays. And especially with the internet dude and how readily available the information is like the mixed martial artists of today compared to 20 years ago, they're, they're leveling up at a way quicker rate now because they're just able to think, I think download more information and process it. And there's like free black belt information just on the internet, you know, compared to 20 years ago when people were just watching DVDs. And so, right. yeah, the level of, uh, of the talent, I think is going to just become exponentially greater in the next couple of years for sure. So adaptability, flexibility, unbreakable, got to be a specialist of all the areas, be a generalist, have the growth mindset, intimate relationship with fear. What do you mean by that? So again, I think Bruce Lee said something along the lines of uh, understanding your fear is the beginning of truly seeing that that's not an exact quote. I don't think, but people should look it up. He said something along those lines. And I remember reading that and, and not, not understanding it. And I don't know if I do understand it, but the way I would look at it now is we all have fear and I think the higher level athlete, the higher level performer isn't immune to fear. They have a more of an intimate relationship with it, meaning they can see it and it doesn't scare them. They're not, they're not afraid to look at their fear as an opportunity to grow. And that that's a, that's an interesting thing, right? Because it's like, if I'm, if I am afraid of something, but I deny it and I pretend like I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not scared. I got this. I'm good. I can't grow. But fear will highlight where we're stuck. Fear will highlight what we need to work on. So it's a teacher. If you look at it that way, like if I'm, let's, let's look, not look at, let's not even look at sport. Let's look at life. If I'm afraid to talk to a, a, a an attractive woman, and I pretend like, ah, no, I mean, I'm, that I'm never probably going to talk to an attractive woman. But if I can see that, then I can say, man, like, all right, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a little afraid to talk to an attractive woman, but I want to talk to an attractive woman. So I, I'm going to try to practice that and get better at it. Right? That's a simple example. But what if, what if it's, you're an MMA athlete and, and, you know, it's, it's fight day and you're at the arena and it's like, you have all these fears and you're just at that, at that point, you, you probably not like, that's not, that's not where you're going to grow, but maybe when you're practicing or maybe that fight highlights that I need to get better at dealing with those things for the next fight. So I, I hope that makes sense, but I think fear can, can highlight where we're stuck. And if you look at it that way, it becomes it becomes a really cool teacher for what we need to work on. I like what you said that you're using fear as an opportunity to grow, because I feel that when the worst moments in our life happen, that's the perfect opportunity to look at it at like the polar opposite side. And this is an opportunity to switch this complete negative into something positive, because usually when we encounter these really messed up things in our life, whether it's like an argument with a family member or a friend or anything, there's a, usually a lesson behind it. If we can stare at fear in the face and take the time to learn from what's going on at that moment. So I think that's uh, in, that's kind of what you're meaning by the intimate relationship with fear. Like it's there and you guys are always back and forth with each other, kind of like sparring but you're helping each other get better at the same time. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Go back to the, the Bruce Lee thing, you know, understanding your fear is the beginning of really the beginning of truly seeing. Well, like we, he's, I, I think that means when you can look at your fear and understand it, it's, it, you're really going to, you're going to start to really understand yourself as a human. So I think a lot of times fear is, 
it's trauma, it's insecurity, it's something happens to us as a kid and we store it. We don't really deal with it. Right. It's, it's, uh, we're taught, I mean, definitely in Western society, we're, to, we're taught, especially as men, you know, don't be tough. Right. Don't, don't show, don't cry. Don't, you know, don't show your fear. So what that builds is that builds this, this insecurity with it where we think we're not supposed to have it. Well, fear is innate, man. Fear is every living organism, organism experiences is fear, right? If, if a giant tiger is attacking me, I'm going to have to have fear. It's not like I can be, I can be tough enough where I'm not going to be afraid. So it, it highlights things. It, it can show us where we need to grow. And I think if you can look at it as a, you know, as a person, you can see where, where there are aspects in your life. You need to work on things. It'll highlight, it'll highlight things. It'll, it'll tell you, it'll show you a lot about you as a person. So as an athlete, if you understand that now you're not affected by it because, because why, what are you afraid of? Right. Are you afraid of losing? Okay. Well, why? Because, because I don't know, you're, you're attaching your happiness to winning. Right. Or you, I don't know, you, you're attaching winning with, uh, getting a bigger house or getting a, right. I mean, you can start to see these things and you're like, shit, my happiness isn't, shouldn't be tied to those things. I want to perform because I'm, I'm, I'm after mastery. I'm, I'm after growth. If you're after mastery and you're after growth, then you're not afraid of losing because losing is also a learning experience. The best in the world lose too. It's really rare. I mean, look at, you know, I don't know, John Jones, who I think has one loss. I guarantee he's lost in sparring. Like he's had moments where he's lost. And those moments have catapulted him to being a better MMA athlete. So that's how I look at it. They're tied together. And hopefully I'm connecting those thoughts. But I think, I think an intimate relationship with your fear, understanding your fear is better than denying it than saying, no, I'm not afraid. No, yes, I'm afraid, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to run from it. That's how I look at it. All right, guys. So if you're listening, face your fears, guys have develop a relationship with it, understand it, look at it, ask yourself some questions, try to figure things out. Cause you don't have to stay stuck in your mind. You don't have to stay stuck in this fear mindset and have all your decisions be sourced from fear. Like it doesn't have to keep being that way, guys. You can, you can do more with your life. There's, there's a lot more opportunity out there. And every time you're faced with these fears, it's normal. It, it happens. It's a part of life. And just think, use it as an opportunity to grow as uh, brother Brandon here is saying, guys. <laughs> Amen, man. Amen. I really like how you said it, it should be after mastery and growth. Like it, we shouldn't for MMA athletes or for anyone like, our pursuit, whether it's for a career or anything, shouldn't be for material things. It should be for mastery and for growth. And that's where I think a lot of uh, people are struggling, because especially when it comes to like picking a career for college, like, oh, what's going to pay well? No, nah, man, you got to not think about that. You got to think about what's going to like pay you well spiritually, like what's going to keep you happy and keep you going. Don't just think about the paycheck. Right. All right, bro. Well, we are about over time. So let me just ask you one last question and we can wrap this up. In your opinion, what is optimal human performance? Let me think about that for a second, man. You're dropping these, you're dropping these bombs on me. Bro. <laughs> I'm no. sorry, bro. Take the time. Absorb it. Yeah, no, Process that's what it. it's about. Yeah. I mean, I think optimal human performance is, uh, I'm going to bring it back to to a growth mindset. I'm going to bring it back to, uh, being able to, to synchronize mind and body. That's how we find flow. That's how we, we truly experience. Uh, that's how we, uh, we truly interact. We, we, we truly connect and to synchronize mind and body is, is breathing. Breathing is the, is the anchor for that. And when we understand that, we can see everything as opportunity to grow mentally and physically. Everything is everything is a challenge in that respect. So that's how I would look at it. Is it coming back to the ability to tap into the moment and looking at 
uh, at flowing with our life from the standpoint of every, every experience is new. The more I can tap into it, the more I grow, the more I embrace, you know? So I think it's that, that that's how I would break that down is optimal performance is about being able to connect with the moment. Beautiful growth mindset, connect with the moment, sinking the mind and body to find that flow state and truly experiencing life by using your breath as an anchor to tap into the moment. Ooh, that is powerful stuff, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Well, um, what are your social medias that uh, people can follow you on? And uh, maybe you want to send any shout outs or promote anything before we wrap this up. So Instagram is probably the, the main one for me, and that's Brandon underscore PFS. Um, Premier Fitness Systems is my gym. So we have a website, premierfitnesssystems.com. Uh, Higher Human Performance Podcast. That's YouTube, Spotify. Uh, not up on Apple yet, but I'm working on that. I think I'm, I'm four episodes or five episodes in, so I'm pretty pretty new to it, but just trying to you know, spread the word, connect with people. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you know, again, hopefully launching this, this uh, higher human um, online community with, with physical, physical training, uh, training programs, mental training, that'll be all there. My goal is to have kind of a, a one-stop shop for those things and just have people that are, that are after growing, connect with people that are after growth. So that's probably, probably the best right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so if you're listening and you are into this growth mindset and you want to connect with Brandon Harris to become a higher human, go ahead and hit him up on the Instagrams and check out all of his online content. Brother Brandon, I appreciate your time. This was amazing. And uh, perhaps we can do another one in the future. Love it, brother. Thank you, Cooney, man. I appreciate what you're doing, bro. All right, bro. This is Mikuni Munsak signing out. Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Mahalo for listening to another episode of Friday Night Kunani Patrol. Feel free to follow my journey at Kunani Patrol on Instagram and Mikuni Munsayak on Facebook. Also, be sure to click that like button, comment at least one thing that you learned from this episode, and share this episode with at least one person. Lastly, if you wish to support my journey, click on the Ko-Fi link in the podcast description. All donations will go towards creating more content to help you all live your best lives. I am Mikuni Munsayak, signing out. Aloha. Friday night, Kunane Patrol.